everybody, this is Birch. Well, I'm back with ChatGPT. And you know, I've done video after video after video trying to help the comic book industry. And finally, I got to thinking, I could eliminate my channel and just let AI solve all the problems in the comic book industry. So let's see if artificial intelligence, uh, cloud computing, clearly uh, setting the world on fire, uh, ChatGPT has been one of easily the most uh, thrilling and exciting and talked about and, th and fearful, feared technology developments the last uh, several years and uh, people writing contracts using chat GPT, all kinds of stuff. Um, as we saw, if you watch the video where I try to fix the X-Men, it does tend to stick with platitudes. It doesn't get into the details. So let's see if we can get it there today. So we're going to fix the comic book industry using chat GPT. So let's, let's give it a shot. So, okay, we're going to, we're going to start right in. How do we, how do we fix the comic book industry? Well, let's just ask that. How can the the American comic book industry be saved? Okay, we're going to give it a shot. All right, what do, what do we have to say? It's faced various challenges in recent years, including de declining sales, a lack of diversity, changing customer preferences. While there is no single solution to save the industry, here are several steps. Number one, diversify the audience. The comic book industry needs to expand. Oh, ChatGPT has gone full woke. <laughs> Comic book industry needs to expand its audience beyond the traditional demographic of young male, white male readers. Publishers should create more diverse characters and storylines that appeal to a wider range of readers, including women, people of color, members of the LGBTQ plus community. In ah, so so okay, so clearly, these uh, the publishers are using this stuff now. That's what's going on. All right, then. So <laughs> they've been trying to diversify the audience. Number two, embrace digital. The rise of digital media has disrupted many industries. Comic book industry is no exception. Publishers to embrace digital distribution, develop new business models, take advantage of opportunities provided by the internet, such as web comics and digital subscriptions. Well, I've been saying that for a while, so okay. Increase promotion and marketing. Sure, invest more time promoting and marketing its products. Collaborations such as movies, TV shows, video games. If only there was some movies that they could collaborate with. Um, collaborate with bookstores and libraries. Bookstores and libraries are important channels for reaching new readers. Comic industry should work with them to increase visibility of their products. They've kind of been doing that. They could create special displays, offering discounts, organizing events, develop new revenue streams, selling physical and digital comics. Publishers should explore other revenue streams such as merchandise licensing and crowdfunding. This could help to reduce the industry's reliance on comic book sales, provide new industry, new opportunities for growth. Overall, saving the American comic book industry will require a concerted effort from the publishers, creators, retailers, and fans. By working together, <laughs> uh, you utopian bitch, you're never going to get that. Anyway, and embracing change, the industry can adapt to challenges and faces and continue to thrive for years to come. Okay. All right. Fair enough. That was a lot of, um, that, that was a lot of stuff there. So how does the U.S. comic industry learn from the success of manga? Okay, how, do, how does it exactly? Well, let's see. What do we got? Oh, it's generating away. Okay, several lessons from the success of manga. Here are some areas of improvement. All right, again, we're going right back to diverse storytelling. Manga is a wide range of storytelling genres and styles. That's true. Action, romance, comedy, horror, and more. Manga often features diverse characters and themes that are more inclusive, such as characters from various ethnicities, genders, and sexualities. Ah, you know, just, yes, gender, sure. Sexualities, sort of, yeah. BL is popular. Ethnicities? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call some bullshit on ethnicities. I, I mean, <laughs> not for nothing. Um, manga, manga has uh, manga is 95% one ethnicity. <laughs> anyway, all right. U.S. comic industry could benefit from a similar approach, sure. Uh, effective marketing and distribution. Oh, it's about distribution. Successful and marketing distribution through various channels, such as bookstores, libraries, online retailers, online communities. U.S. comic industry could similar make better use of social media. Oh, God help us. Online communities, digital distribution to expand the reach. Okay. Reader engagement, community building. Manga publishers create strong reader communities through events and online platforms where fans can connect with other readers and creators. U.S. industry could invest in creating similar events forums, like a Comic-Con maybe? I don't know. Collaborations and cross-promotion. Manga has often been adapted to anime, films, and TV shows. The U.S. comic industry could explore opportunities for licensing deals, merchandise, and adaptations. Oh, man. Somebody should talk to Marvel about adapting their comics into movies. Uh, unique art styles and storytelling techniques. Many manga series have unique art styles, storytelling, and set them apart from the traditional comic book formats. Okay. Yes. I mean, yeah, kind of. I don't know. I, I would say there's more, there's a wider range of art styles in U.S. comics than manga. 
Um, I like the manga style, don't get me wrong, but there's a there's a narrower range there, I think. Um, all right, U.S. comic industry, okay, can learn from the success. All right, so uh, the, uh, there's some stuff there that can attract your readers, expand the market. That's what I asked, how to expand the market. So let me get in here and ask something different. Yeah. Is uh, our, let's see, let's see, our, is manga beating U.S. comics? in sales and popularity is manga our manga hmm. our manga titles beating us comics in sales and popularity well, what do we have to say are they in recent years manga has become increasingly popular many manga titles have been successful while it's difficult to make a direct comparison between manga and us comics as there are different industries and different audiences and distribution models are some indication that manga is performing well in the u.s market Okay, manga sales have been on the rise. U.S. comic sales have been declining. 2020 manga sales in the U.S. were up 43% compared to the U.S. year, while U.S. comic sales were down 20%. Oh, that's interesting. That's uh, that's not that's not what we have heard. Now, granted, we've heard a lot of bullshit in this stuff, and who knows if you should trust this, but interesting. That's I, I haven't seen it laid out that way. 43% up versus down 20. Hmm, okay. Uh, manga has also been successful in attracting diverse and growing readership, younger readers, women, people of different ethnicities. All right. Important to note, U.S. comics still have a dedicated and passionate fan base. Many success. All these, this, this, you call me a fence sitter. Chad GBT is the ultimate fence sitter of a, of a thing. Batman, Spider-Man, and, and the X-Men. Okay. Fine. Both manga and U.S. comics have their own unique strengths and appeal to different audiences. How does DC um, uh, reduce... <laughs> The number of Batman comics it makes every month. All right. Let's see what we got here. DC Comics, large stable, a popular character series, and of such, they have a lot of titles published each month, including multiple Batman series. While reducing the number of Batman comics produced may be challenging, here's some tragedies they could consider. Okay, DC, you, you listening? Consolidate titles. DC could consolidate multiple Batman series into one or two main titles. Okay, that's not a bad idea. Focus on quality over quantity. The hell you say. All right, instead of releasing multiple Batman titles, DC could focus on producing a smaller number of high-quality, rail-written, and well-drawn Batman comics. Holy shit, that's a good idea. Increase collaboration between creative teams. DC could work to increase uh, collaboration between writers and artists, allowing them to work on multiple titles and reducing the need for separate creative teams on each series. Okay, that's kind of weird. Um, I'm not sure if it's calling for anthologies there. Expand the focus beyond Batman. Yeah, no shit. That's, that was a question. <laughs> While Batman is a hugely popular character, DC should consider expanding the focus of its publishing line to include other characters in series, which would help reduce the overall number of Batman comics produced. Explore digital first options. Okay, all right. Uh, you, stop your smoking crack there. Overall, reducing the number of Batman comics DC produces each month may be a challenging task, but there are several potential strategies they can consider. Consolidating titles, focus on quality, increasing collaboration, expanding their publishing line. Don't expand. My God. Uh, <laughs> okay, fair enough. All right, one last question for him here. Will the, um, uh, will the battle between creators and fans in comics ever end? Okay, will it? What do you say? The tension is a complex issue. Okay, it's unlikely to be resolved completely. But it can be improved with more open communication and mutual respect between both parties. Hey, how about that? On one hand, creators have the right to artistic freedom and the ability to tell stories they want to tell without fear of excessive fan criticism or harassment. I don't know if they have the right to that, but they, they should have that. They also deserve fair compensation recognition for their work, as well as the ability to make changes and adaptions to work over time. On the other hand, fans have the right to express their opinions and feedback on the work they consume, as well as the ability to support or reject certain creative choices. They also play an important role in the success of the industry and they, as they provide feedback and create demand for certain types of stories and characters. One possible way to reduce a conflict between creators and fans is to increase transparency and communication between the two groups. Creators can provide more insight into their creative process, explain their choices, and listen to constructive feedback from fans. Same time, fans can make an effort to be respectful and constructive in their criticism and avoid personal attacks or harassment. Ultimately, the goal should be to create more positive and collaborative work environment in the industry where creators and fans can work together to create the best possible comics. While the tension may never completely disappear, it can be mitigated with better communication, mutual respect, and a focus on creating great stories that everyone can enjoy. All right. You know, I, I, I will drop the mic on that one. Thank you, Chad GBT. Let's hope that uh, the utopia is... Uh, is is here coming soon anyway what do you think 
<laughs> any of these good ideas? Let me know in the comments below. And thanks for listening.